And the reporting I'd done were word logic based. That is, they were lectures with picture illustrations <coughs> or interviews, which is the same thing. That real life never got out of the film, never came through the television set. And that uh, we would have to drop word logic and find a dramatic logic in which things really happen. If we could do that, we'd have a whole new basis for a whole new journalism. So I began looking for a story, and there was this young senator running for president who didn't have a chance. He was a Catholic, he was too Catholic. He was rich, he was too rich. He was from the eastern seaboard. And I thought, what a wonderful story. So I contacted uh, his people and set up an appointment uh, in Georgetown. I talked to him in his townhouse in Washington, D.C., and basically I said, this is a new form of reporting. It's a new form of photography. It's sound and motion, and the camera has to be with you all day, every day, for five days. And you have to forget about it. He said, why should I do that? And I said, this is a new form of journalism, and uh, we're simply going to watch what happens. We're not going to direct, we're not going to light, we're not going to, we're not going to ask you to do anything. Kennedy said, well, will this run before the election? And I said, I can't guarantee it. And he said, well, why should I do it? And I said, because this will be a new form of history also. And it'll be a true history of what happened in Wisconsin. Now, I knew he'd written his book, his book of history. Um, and I knew he, he had a regard for history. And what do you know? He, he sort of nodded. We knew what Cinema Verite ought to be. My idea was to take the lightweight camera and move into people's lives and let the stories tell themselves. And the last night, before the election was finished, my whole team gathered to shoot the last rally of Kennedy. I had asked Al Mazel to concentrate on Jackie Kennedy, but Penny Baker entered the picture, and he walked up to Al. Al had a camera with a regular lens. Penny Baker walked up, pulled off the regular lens, stuck a strange-looking lens on the front of it, which is a wide angle, and said, here, Al, you follow Kennedy when he enters the Serb Hall. Hold it up above his head. Don't worry about where you're aimed. This is a wide angle. It'll take in everything. <laughs> Kennedy entered the hall. Mazel's right behind him, a little shorter, holding the camera over his head, and he walked the full length of that hall and the adoration and the excitement of the people just kept pouring into the lens. And that shot turned out to be the most famous shot from primary. so forth. Now, he may announce that in that case, he won't be responsible for law and order, but that's, that could come any day. So that. That's the matter. Then we would have the guard ready. But after he'd been elected president, I went to West Palm Beach and I showed him primary. Jacqueline was there, too. When it was over, Jacqueline couldn't contain herself. She was thrilled with the film. He liked it, too. And I told him I had something to talk to him about it. And I said, look, you're a historian, and you're about to move into the White House. And when you get there, you're going to discover that visually there are no records except for people shaking hands, signing documents, and posing for the camera. And I said, I want to make a film about a president with his back to the wall, making decisions during a crisis. He said, well, maybe you better come down and shoot some tests in the White House 
and see if I can forget the camera in the White House the way I did on the campaign trail. A few weeks later, I moved into the White House with Penny Baker as the cameraman, and we start shooting the president doing business. Now, Kennedy has just moved into the White House. He's happy. There's a wonderful feeling there. His sisters come in and they joke around and he signs autographs and nice things happen. <laughs> On the second day, Kennedy walks into a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Joint Chiefs of Staff bring up the subject of Cuba. Now, we haven't invaded Cuba yet, and we're in there shooting. And finally, an admiral points to Kennedy and he points to me and reminds Kennedy that the camera is rolling and they're talking about a sensitive subject. Kennedy looks at me and grins. I grin and we leave. But the fact is that Kennedy completely forgot about, about the camera. When a crisis arrives, I pick up the phone and I call Pierre Salinger, Kennedy's press secretary, and I say, Pierre, this is a crisis. Let's shoot it. Pierre says, how can you propose to shoot a film during a crisis like this? I said, Pierre, remember, the idea is we're looking for a crisis. He said, yeah, but not this one. This happened four or five times. It turned out we couldn't shoot a crisis that had an international connection. We couldn't shoot a crisis in which a chief of state of another country was involved. And finally, a crisis came along in our own country about the integration of the University of Alabama. And we were able to start shooting that crisis. And I sent one team to be with the governor of the state of Alabama, who was trying to hold up integration of the university, another team with Bobby Kennedy. And I began receiving footage 